Good evening and welcome to tonight's King's Talk on Art. And my name is Greg Hunter and I'm the Deputy Head co Cricket here at King's. Tonight, we welcome live from New York City, OKS, Henry Neuendorf, and his talk entitled, Why You Should Choose a Career in the Contemporary Art World. Henry left King's in 2007 and read management studies at Newcastle. Just over seven years ago, he joined Artnet. Artnet is a leading online resource for the international art market with over 2 million monthly users and has held many positions uh, and Henry's held many positions from writer, to editor, and now as a specialist in contemporary art. I'm looking forward to also hearing more about uh, information about how art has traded, and that will be a real feature tonight. At any time, either type your question into the Q&A function as part of Zoom, or alternatively, after his short presentation, you put your virtual hand up and we can put you live on the air to ask your question yourself. Now, it was with great pleasure that I introduced Henry. Welcome, Henry. Hi, thank you for having me. Thanks, Henry. Look, can you, can you start, before you start your presentation, just firstly, can you tell us about your memories of Kings and perhaps what happened next in your life? Um, yeah, sure. Well, I came out to Kings in, uh, I think, 2004. Um, I was, I, um, was in, at Kings for uh, only four years. I didn't do the full five. I joined in remove year. And um, I was in uh, MO, which I have lots of fond memories of. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, a time of my life that I uh, look back on very fondly. Um, I was involved in you know, many aspects of the school, um, especially in, in sports, which I really enjoyed. I played rugby, was um, on the rowing team, and yeah, all sorts of other things. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice time. That's great. Now, um, so I believe to start tonight, um, uh, and I, I suppose you'll, you'll, you'll get more into what happened after Kings as well as part of this presentation. Start tonight, you have a, a, a short uh, a series of slides and talks, and you can tell us a bit more about how art is traded. Yes, that's right. So since I work in, since I work in the contemporary art market, um, which is quite a complex marketplace, I thought that it would be helpful for everyone listening and watching to have a bit of an understanding um, of the marketplace and how artworks become valuable and why. And so I just have a couple of slides that I'm going to um, present. Um, there we go. Can everyone see that? Is that viewable? Yeah, yeah all good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, one sec. I just have to hit play. There we go. Um, so I'm going to just be talking about the contemporary art market and discuss, you know, why you should choose a career in contemporary art or why you should at least consider um, working in the contemporary art market or the contemporary art world. Um, so basically, the art market is split into two different sections. On the one hand, you have the primary market, and on the other, you have the secondary market. So when an artwork is, so the, the, the primary market basically is when an artist creates a painting or any other artwork, it goes to an art dealer who sells it to a collector, who then hopefully will donate it to a museum. The goal is always to try to get longevity in an artist's career to try to maintain um, a, a career over several years. And the best way to do that is to sell an artwork to a museum or to get a collector to donate an artwork to a museum. Um, because essentially once it goes into the museum, the assumption is that it does no longer, it no longer circulates in the marketplace and can no longer be subject to speculation. Uh, the secondary market is basically a resale market. Um, I like to joke that I'm a used art dealer. Um, so um, artworks that have been owned before, um, they go um, into the secondary market. So um, essentially what you're looking at is the same trajectory until you get to the collector. And from the collector, you go to the auctioneer and, or an auction house, and they put it on the market 
um, and then it goes back to a different collector. And you can see some certain artworks that come up at auction several times. Um, and this is something that in general generates the highest prices and the headlines that you see um, in, the, in the papers um, is when something goes on the secondary market and several people are interested in an artist that is particularly desirable and hot. And you'll see that uh, artwork go up in price significantly in some cases. Um, so next, I'm going to talk to you about the artist. Um, nothing works without the artist. He's or she is the person who creates the work and who gives meaning um, to the entire industry and to the entire art world. So the gentleman that you see in the picture here is uh, an artist that I know that I'm friendly with. His name is Tunji Adenigi Jones. He's 28 years old. He's also um, a, a Brit um, with uh, Nigerian roots. And um, he uh, has been subject, his, his work has really accelerated in demand in recent years. And the prices have gone up substantially to around, you know, uh, three, $400,000 um, uh, for a painting. The paintings that you see on the bottom right-hand side are from his first exhibition in New York. And I believe those paintings at the time, and the, I think this was 2018, so not that long ago, I think they were selling for around 12 or $15,000. So you're already seeing a substantial uh, price increase for him um, for, and for his work. And I'm gonna explain to you how that works. So here you see Tunji's dealers. On the upper right, you have Nikhil Bushen, who was his original art dealer. And um, the first dealer to take on his work and represent his work in the marketplace after he graduated from art school. And she did the early exhibitions, which were very well reviewed and people gravitated towards the work and were buying the work. And I think even from his first solo exhibition, he, uh, Nikhil had sold um, all of the works. Um, next, you, on the bottom right, you have uh, the Moran brothers who have a gallery in Los Angeles called Moran Moran. And they similarly hosted exhibitions and sold his artworks. And, um, you know, you see, especially for young artists, there was a lot of uh, interest in, in his work um, and it, it caught the eye of the gentleman in the large image who's uh, Jay Jopling, um, an English art dealer who has a gallery called White Cube, which is one of the most prominent galleries in, in the world, um, headquartered in, in London, but I believe also with branches in uh, Hong Kong and, and an office in New York and, and several other cities internationally. Um, so. Once the sales reach a certain level, you start getting these major blue chip dealers interested in the work. And that really brings the artworks to a next level. Essentially what happens is that these large international dealers and galleries lends legitimacy to the artwork. Um, and from in terms of the way that the people and the collectors and people that are interested in the arts they view it more favorably when a large internationally branded art gallery gets behind the work and, and, is, uh, and invests in an artist's career. Next, you have the collector. So once the dealer gets the work, it's dispersed to different collectors. And here we have a number of individuals that, that uh, I, I know that own artworks by Tunji and um, the, the collectors are, are, are absolutely vital because they allow the artists to have a career and to support themselves. They're the ones that essentially buy the artwork um, in order for the artist to get an income source in order to make more artwork. And ideally, what you would like is you would like a good collector to hold on to the work um, for several decades and then eventually donated to a museum in order to get that longevity that I was 
referencing earlier. Um, if that doesn't happen and the collector sees um, an artwork in more in terms of its monetary value, then the artwork will go to auction. You know, for a lot of people that buy an artwork by an artist early in their career for $10,000, for instance, or $12,000, which is considered a relatively low entry level price point. If that artwork suddenly is worth, you know, $400,000, $500,000, some people have a really, really hard time holding on to that artwork, you know, especially if you're a young collector. And a lot of these collectors that buy young artists tend to be younger. Um, you know, you're looking at such an enormous return. We're talking about, you know, a down payment on an apartment or on a house uh, or something similarly. Um, other times people are in it for financial gain and they are looking to make money and they, they operate in the market uh, speculatively. Um, so then we get to the museum curator. And like I said earlier, we want, um, or, or dealers want their artists to be in museums and the curators are the individuals who select artworks that the museum will purchase to go into their permanent collection, where hopefully they will not, they will stay. And, um, and you know, artworks that are purchased by museums and artists that are in museum collections have a higher status in the contemporary art world than artists who don't. Um, the museum is seen as kind of the arbiter of taste and their job is to select artworks from young artists, from contemporary artists, that they feel like reflect the times that we live in the best. Um, that's really essential. And next we have the auctioneer. And here you will see again, sticking to kind of our theme, we have a artwork by Tunji that was sold at Philips auction house for, what does it say, 300,000 pounds, a substantial return on the 10,000 or so that the work was first valued at when it was initially presented. Oops, um, sorry, I went a little ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the auction house is, is where um, people go to resell their artworks and where the artwork circulate within the marketplace and where you really see those big prices come. Um, and next we have uh, everyone else. Um, here we have on the top right, art critics who play an important role in the art market as well. A favorable review from a reputable art critic such as Jerry Zaltz who won the Pulitzer Prize recently for art criticism is one. Um, publicists, people that support the entire infrastructure, um, you know, that bring art artists work to the attention of the press and by extension to the general public are also crucial. And then you also have people like the art handlers, people that install artworks that are trained to handle, you know, multi-million dollar artworks. So there's, um, what I'm trying to show is that not only explain that um, how the marketplace functions, but also try to give you an idea of all the different types of work that is um, available in the, in, the, in the art market, in the art world and how, how diverse it is. Um, in terms of job opportunities and career opportunities. And, you know, personally, I'm just gonna go to the last slide. Um, yeah, I, I feel like um, this is an industry that is among the most interesting, um, in my opinion, most interesting industries, most interesting lines of work to be in. It's, you get to meet such a large and diverse number of people and they're all very interesting people um, from the artists to the dealers and there's a lot of um, really fun, interesting people. And yeah, it's just a, a, a great industry to work in it. Um, so I can recommend it to anyone. And you know, if you uh, are considering working in the art world or um, it's something that, you're, uh, that, that you've thought about or maybe something that you didn't think about, but you know, upon listening to this talk would consider then, you know, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me, you can send me an email. I also put my social media handle there. You can send me a DM if you like. Um, and hope if you have any questions about 
uh, about this. You know, I'm I'm available here to talk to anyone who would be interested. Um, yeah, and that basically wraps up uh, my uh, presentation part of uh, here. So I'm gonna just go back to the normal screen. Let's see if that works. That's, yeah, that's fantastic, Henry. Can you um, can you almost you're given a great overview of, of, of how art is from, from the, the actual um, creation of the art through the, through, the, through the selling and the reselling of it. Um, how did you get into the art world yourself? Sort of what was your progress from, from King's almost? Sure. So um, when, I, when I left King's um, in 2007, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do in terms of a career. And so I deliberately picked uh, a degree that was as open-ended as possible so as not to kind of restrict the opportunities in the future. So I ended up um, studying marketing and management at Newcastle Uni. Um, and I was there for three years, um, uh, which, was, which was interesting. So you, I got a bit of a, an education in, um, in, in you know, business studies and, and marketing and things like that, um, which are still useful to me now. Um, for sure. Um, but um, when I graduated, um, I kind of wasn't any wiser as to what I should do than when I started my studies. Um, so I just, you know, bounced around here and there, did internships at a lot of different companies, and fairly quickly was able to rule out a number of things. I worked at PricewaterhouseCoopers in the international tax department, which was mind-numbingly boring. So <laughs> quickly determined that international tax is not something for me. Um, I also worked in investor relations, um, which is essentially where publicly traded companies outsource the kind of uh, shareholder contact um, to uh, private companies. And I worked for one of these companies again very for for me what definitely not for me found it very dull and then um you know something that i probably should have touched on earlier my all my family works in art um with the exception of my youngest brother so um that's something that i never really considered and it's something that i kind of shied away from because i really wanted to kind of forge my own path and you know um, make my own way in the world um but you know being faced with um maybe working at a bank or something like that or you know um th that did really didn't appeal to me um and i had a bit of a kind of uh i wouldn't say crisis that's a bit of a strong word but you know um i i didn't know what to do or what what i what is something like a career that would be a good fit for me um so i talked to my dad and he convinced me uh, to try an internship at an art gallery. Um, and eventually I relented and I, uh, I was able to secure an internship in Berlin um, at an art gallery. And, you know, I, I never look back, you know, it's, it, it's something that immediately off the bat I, I enjoyed. And, you know, I think it, a lot of it has to do with my family's background in, in art and that you know, my, my dad was, a, was an art dealer for many decades and there was always art in our home. Um, and uh, I, my mother would take me to museums since the age of five or six, very, very regularly. Um, so um, that's something that, uh, that, you know, over the years I had built up a kind of repository of all, um, all these many different things that I had seen without even realizing it. And it kind of gave me, in a weird way, it gave me comfort and, and a sense of familiarity working in an art gallery environment. And on top of that, I found that everyone I met there and talked to was incredibly interesting. Um, not like to the tax advisors that I had been working with previously at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, yeah, so artists, for example, have a very unique perspective on the world and they 
have a career and a job that kind of falls outside of, I guess, mainstream society in a way, which makes them very, very interesting people to speak to because they have a very unique way of looking at things. Um, and also the dealers are, are very interesting, very interesting people. Um, so yeah, it was, it was uh, almost like a, not like a revelation, but you know, it felt like uh, something that I should have been doing before. So I did that, uh, worked at another art gallery um, for uh, a while, and then had the opportunity to turn to writing and I became an art journalist. And I was, I, I wrote over 1900 articles on contemporary art over three and a half years, um, doing like three to four a day or something like that. Um, after my first year working as a journalist, an art journalist, um, I had the opportunity to move to uh, one of the English speaking markets. At this time, I was still working in Berlin. There was some internal restructuring and the, um, the company had decided that there was not enough interest in the German art market to have two full-time employees in, uh, in Germany. And I was offered the chance to go to London or New York. And since I had spent so much time in the UK already, I had kind of said, you know, I'll pick New York. So um, took a while to get my visa and papers sorted, but uh, a couple months later, I, I moved to, to, New, to New York to become an art writer. And that was very interesting too. I mean, the, the art market in a city like New York is unlike anywhere else. It's the, just the, the level of interest in contemporary art is, is huge. Um, there's such a depth of, um, of, of not just artists working in the city, but um, people buying and selling things. And um, just, it seems like the whole market is centered around, around the city, um, which was really, really interesting for, for me to kind of be involved in and be in the middle of. And then eventually um, I, the, the constant deadlines and being chained to a desk started to wear on me after a couple of years. And I was really interested in going back to working with the actual physical artwork, the actual art object. And I had the opportunity um, because someone in the auctions department at Artnet was moving to a different department that I could take her place. And I just talked to uh, the people at the company and, and asked if it would be possible and if that's something they, if they would consider me. And fortunately it worked out and I was able to become a specialist for contemporary art. And what that essentially means is that I um, convince people to sell artworks with us and then convince others to buy those artworks. And the whole thing takes place online. Um, a lot of the artworks we, we sell are sold sight unseen, so people don't see them or view them in person. Um, the advantages of that are just much lower costs because you don't have to warehouse anything or anything like that. So yeah, that's like a quick rundown or something, I mean, maybe a little bit longer rundown of how I got into this. Thanks, Henry. Can, just, just to please, at any time now, uh, please type your que questions into the Q&A function of Zoom or please put your hand up and we can put you on the air and ask uh, your question directly of Henry. So yeah, you, you've given a really good sort of rundown how you sort of moved from from, from sort of job to job almost and then, and end up in New York as well. So, so yeah, we do have quite a number of the uh, current pupils at King's watching um, and former ones as well. Um, how can someone get involved in the art world now? What's what would you what would be your best advice if you if they're watching thinking oh, this sounds exciting, this sounds good. I like the idea of turning 10,000 into 500,000. What, what, what do I need to do? Give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, there's many, many ways to get involved in, in the art world, in the art market, depending on you know, where your interests lie and, and what you want to do. Um, so, I, I mean, even if you're OKS and, and you know, your career is elsewhere, um, maybe you should consider buying an artwork. Um, you know, there's all these misconceptions that all contemporary artwork is incredibly expensive, um, which is absolutely not the case. 
there's a lot of artwork out there and a lot of artists that that could use your support um and you know if you're intelligent and you do your research properly and you talk to people and you listen and and you and you and you look um then you know you can buy something that might appreciate in value in the future which is always nice um apart from that you know if you maybe think buying an artwork is too much of a commitment for you at this point um i would just say go and see art go and see as much art as you can go to art galleries go to museums i know london has amazing museums has amazing art galleries um and just look at things and and you know um ask questions to the the dealers and and um you know the the docents at the museums um to to get involved um you know those those and if you're more if you're interested in diving a little or delving a little bit deeper um all of them uh main or or main museums offer some kind of patron groups that you can join um a lot of times there are young young patron groups people under 40 or even people of any age um but it's a it's a great way to meet other people um that share an interest in contemporary art and exchange ideas and you can uh, a lot of times these museum groups will facilitate a lot of interesting opportunities such as visiting an artist studio and having curator led tours of exhibitions um and things like that that'll get you a better understanding um of the contemporary art world and and just um you know bring you a little bit closer um to the to the inside and have more access to to the inside of the the art world um i myself am a, I'm a member of a number of different museum groups i'm a member of the the whitney young patrons group and of the Storm King Art Center, which is in a little bit north, like an hour and a half north of New York City, which is an outdoor sculpture park, which is really fantastic. Um, and you'll also be supporting the museum that way. So, you know, two birds, one stone, as they say. So I'm I'm fascinated with sort of what your what your typical day in in entails, you know, um because I, I take it that contacts and is social media now become a big thing or is going to uh going to key events to try and network with people in your position how important is that is is that and can you give a flavor of what your typical day might be sure i mean the art market is absolutely uh um is a, a an industry that's that's very much dependent on relationships i mean this is a relationship industry and um it's very very important to manage those relationships and to maintain those relationships um with your clients and with your um with with artists and dealers um and uh yeah so my typical day um is mostly spent emailing and and on the phone um uh it's just you know reaching out to to clients to talk about their needs if they're looking for an artwork in particular that they'd like to buy and then um also consigning things for our auctions um that involves um you know outreach by email um telephone calls so yeah that's that's what my typical day looks like and you know um I'll meet clients as well we'll grab lunch or a coffee or something like that or I'll have a viewing um where I'll go and look at an artwork in person to kind of see the condition that it's in and if it's something that we might be interested in taking into our sales um and then you know a lot of it is also just going out to see art so i know what's what what's relevant and and what's um what's up and coming and what's going to be fresh and new in the future um because those being the being a first mover is very valuable being able to anticipate trends and and kind of different movements at the art market will the direction that the art market's going to go into because like uh, a lot of the creative industries it's driven by different trends and and fashions and stuff like that so that's something that I also do um I I go to galleries frequently and go to museums a lot um yeah and then also you know you can meet people in the galleries and the museums and um so yeah that's kind of my my typical day and um 
And so what are the pros and cons of working in the arts and with your job? What are, the, what, what are the good things and what are the things that frustrate you a bit? I mean, I think I touched on this before, but working with a lot of interesting people is, is a great thing. And, and you know, it's not lost on me that the arts and, and being involved in art, collecting art, is for many people a passion project that they do outside of their spare time, something that they have a great interest in. And it's just fantastic that, you know, I get to do this for my career. Um, a lot of collectors, they do this on the side um, of their business that, or their work and they're not able to dedicate all of their time to it and i am so i'm very very grateful and fortunate that i'm you know this is something that a lot of people this is people's hobbies and i'm doing it for a living so that's really fantastic um in terms of the downsides is that you know it's a business where that has relatively low entry barriers um and i mean that in the sense that it's probably one of the last unregulated marketplaces you know if you're going to be a surveyor or a real estate agent you need to or an accountant you have to get certified for all of those professions you need zero certification to be an art dealer to be an art advisor or an art consultant and um, a lot of the time you kind of have to play this guessing game with people that you're introduced to what if their credentials are legitimate or not and yeah that's that's something that i find frustrating um yeah and also you know uh the the people that i that i deal with primarily are, are often um very wealthy individuals and they don't like to be told no very frequently so um yeah it's always a challenge to negotiate on things like such as pricing and and um and and that kind of thing so yeah i would say those are some of some of the downsides of, of the of the work but you know i i enjoy it all despite um despite you know it sometimes being challenging that's that's just how it is i think in all lines of work fantastic and um can you we've got a question from humphrey sort of can you describe something that reflects the times we live in. This is, these are sort of, is, is it more a dark sort of art or, or what is it the time, what would reflect the times that we live in now? Well, I would say that um, for a very, very long time, the art market was a place that was not very diverse. And I mean that in terms of the people that the art market, uh, there's certain individuals that peep the art market try to keep on the fringes. Um, a lot of uh, women's artworks are valued substantially lower than men's artworks, for example. Um, a lot of people of color um, uh, and racial minorities were discriminated against for, for several decades and, and longer even. Um, and there's been a kind of readjustment to that, where people have taken note of these inequities um, that have taken place in the past and have worked to change them, which is really wonderful news because everyone's perspective matters and everyone's um, and people's perspectives um, come through in their artwork. And, you know, they help us understand each other um, better. And that's why I think it's fantastic that the art market is beginning to, I'm not gonna say it's there quite yet, beginning to um, take that into account. Um, and one of the ways that it's manifested itself is that the artworks of young artists of color of, and young women right now are particularly desirable. That we've seen price increases for, uh, for, for, um, for, for women artists and for artists of color in recent years. And it's kind of, they're not on the same level um, as the racial majority in the United States and probably in Western Europe yet, but you know, it's a step in the right direction. And I think that's really, really encouraging. Um, and I think that really reflects the time we live in, especially in the US uh, with the 
COVID pandemic and with the killing of George Floyd, which in America was hugely, uh, uh, was a huge event that woke a lot of people up to how certain people are being discriminated against. And I think all of these, um, and also, you know, wealth inequality and things like that, um, people are more cognizant of it now in the art market and paying close attention to it. And I think that's, that reflects the time we live in, in, in terms that you're seeing more perspectives and more voices um, in, the art, in the art world, you know, exhibitions in museums, um, works at auction, and, you know, um, exhibitions in galleries. And yeah, I think that's, that's excellent news. We need more of it. And what would you think are some of the misconceptions about the art world to those that aren't in it? Well, I mean, I touched on one earlier. I think that, you know, people often have the misconception that all art is insanely expensive. And I think that has to do with the fact that the, uh, the, the, the press gravitates towards stories of uh, large price tags. Um, I mean, that's, I feel that's how most people on uh, outside of the art world kind of how they see the art world is, you know, this place where people just buy and sell these paintings that they think their kid could have done or something for these insane prices. And, um, you know, that's absolutely not the case. You know, uh, artwork is, a lot of artwork is surprisingly accessible. Um, you know, starting at a couple thousand dollars, a couple thousand pounds. Again, not, I'm under, obviously aware that not everyone has that kind of money lying around at all times, but it's not all hundred thousands, millions, tens of thousands. You know, it, you can buy drawing, uh, work on paper or print for relatively small amounts and get your start that way. Um, if you're interested in collecting or, or transacting. So that's one misconception um, that, that kind of bothers me a lot is that, you know, people seem to think that it's inaccessible to them when in most cases it isn't. Um, and then, you know, um, yeah, I think that, I'm trying to think what else. Hmm. Is, um, with the artwork that you showed earlier of the, the gentleman, whose artwork went from sort of 10,000 to yeah, 300,000. Is that a common occurrence? You know, is, is, it, is, it, is it one of these things where actually, you know, come on, Henry, I'll, I'll give you 10,000 pounds, come back to me in a few years, give me 500,000. You know, how likely is that? Or is, uh, have you plucked one sort of anom anomaly out? Or actually, is that more regular than we think? It's very very uncommon to answer your question yeah. and it's very rare that you if you're a speculator for instance that you get these right a lot um however um there are certain things that you can look for um where you can kind of see or get a sense of what um is going to appreciate in value and in terms of art historical importance too not forget that. Um, and with Tunji, for instance, you know, um, I n had a good idea of when I first saw his paintings, I was fairly sure that he would make waves and would become um, desirable and would be an important artist. Um, just because it's something very unique. It's, you know, if you, if you look at a lot of art, um, something that is different, that is somehow has, offers a different perspective um, is something that stands out, you know, and that then, and, and his painting stood out to me for sure. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's, that's one way of doing it is looking at a lot of things and, and learning, oh, this has potential. I can see some potential in this. Another way of doing it is uh, just, and this is probably the, <laughs> The less advisable way to do it, but you know, talking a lot to people, um, uh, you know, being able to um, uh, 
to chat to all sorts of different dealers and people in the marketplace and, and see what they're looking at and what they're interested in. Um, that's also important because like I touched on earlier, um, importance of an artist and, and essentially value is created when there's a broad consensus among these different groups of individuals. So we have the dealers, the collectors, the curators and the auction houses and the art critics and others in the, that are in the marketplace. Um, and when you get this consensus among all these disparate groups who have different competing interests and everything, that's when you see an artist that's gonna, um, where you're gonna see increases in. Um, so you have the, the, the challenge is to recognize it early, um, not always easy. Thanks. And uh, it's it's funny, just mention Tunji, uh, Gilly, one of our people watching, uh, says he's got his first UK solo show at Charleston in Lewis, Sussex until March 2022 um, called Astral Reflection. So if you want to see in person, actually, um, uh, some, some of Tunji's work um, and you're in the UK, that might be a good opportunity. Yep. Also has an exhibition, I believe, right now at White Cube Gallery um in london or coming up shortly i'm not sure i think it might be open now or, or might be opening in the coming weeks but it's definitely in november opening in november so if you're in london you know check it out it's he's really really fantastic and a great guy on top of that as well that 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 does help um but, <laughs> so when you mentioned that the art world, it, when you mentioned that sort of you, your profession is unregulated, um, you know, if you were to employ somebody, what what skill set would you look for? Because you know clearly, you know, you came from a very different uh, mm -hmm. background. You come from the sort of I, I, reading art at university and and being necessarily a, a great personal artist yourself. Uh, you know, what what are the skill set or the traits or personalities you're looking for that would say you would be fantastic working in the art world or as an art dealer? What, what are you looking for? Um, well, you know, there's so many different roles and, and career opportunities available in the art market that it could be super, super broad. Um, you know, if you have really, if you're a really, really talented artist, you know, an artist would be, would be one. Um, of course, not everyone can be talented and I certainly am not. I'm absolutely not talented in any way. I, I, I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, so that leaves a lot of, you know, so many other options. I mean, for myself, if you're, um, if you're, um, you know, there's, there's this, I think the most important trait is to have a good eye. You know, they say in the, in the music business, uh, uh, A&R or, or a producer or a record executive that can hear a hit song um, but, and, and or recognize a hit song before uh, from a band and predict the, its success, they say that, you know, he has or he or she has a good ear. And in the art market, we call it the eye, right? So being able to recognize um, what, what artwork is good and what artwork has quality um, and being able to pick if you're offered, for instance, two different, two or three or four different artworks or paintings by one artist, how do you pick which one to take, which one you should get? That's where your eye comes in, you know, and that's something that um, is you can't really teach, you know, it's something you, you either have it or you don't, you know, and you kind of hone it by looking at several different things. I think that's a, a very, very important characteristic if you're going to be uh, involved in the market for sure, having a good eye, being able to differentiate. Um, then also, you know, a lot of what's in our world is, a, is essentially a sales job. Um, what I do is essentially a sales job, just highly specialized um, towards art. So you, uh, if, you're, if you're outgoing and, and personable and you love talking to people and you know, you're not shy about cold calling, and these kind of things, then maybe that's, but, but, you know, you don't want to be a car dealer, you know, <laughs> then, uh, or, or car salesman, then maybe uh, you should, you know, the art market is, is something where the sales work is very, very interesting. Um, 
apart from that, you know, there's um, work in museums that you that uh, that you can do um, if you're particularly studious and you like research and you like reading and you like looking at images. Um, you know, then you can. There's all sorts of careers available there, working as a curator or working in the development side or um, working as a conservator. You know, restoring artworks and and those types of things or you know, my, my girlfriend is a publicist. She does PR, specialized to the art market. And, you know, she's incredibly talented at that. She's a very outgoing person. Um, and, you know, she loves talking to people, meeting people. And, um, you know, those, th those are qualities that lend themselves to that kind of work. Um, so, and also working, working in a gallery, you know, if you just uh, have an interest in being surrounded by artwork and um, then that's something that's available. Um, and, you know, working as an archivist or, or you know, all, all sorts, it's, it's very, very broad, but I guess the, the characteristics um, that you got to bring are just an interest in it and, and a knowledge base. And then, you know, you can find something within the industry that suits your skill set for sure. Okay, I've got a couple, couple more questions for you. What's, um... If you had one art gallery you could go to in the world, which one would it be and why? Oh man, that's too difficult to answer. <laughs> Is it a museum or? Museum, one, one museum in the world. So I don't know, there's, there's one, this is, uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to answer it this way. There's a particular chapel in Rome that has a painting by the Renaissance painter Caravaggio called The Calling of St. Matthew which is one of my all-time favorite paintings. Um, I would pick that. That's really, really fantastic. Um, yeah. Other than that, you know, I love the Whitney Museum. Um, I go regularly in, in New York City. It's really fantastic. Um, an another museum that I really enjoyed is the Louisiana Museum in Copenhagen in Denmark. That's really fantastic. That's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and you know, so difficult. Then you know those big encyclopedic museums like the Metropolitan Museum, the Tate Gallery in London. Yeah, I, I mean, if I had to pick one, I would go for. I don't remember the chapel's name, but I'm sure if you look up the Calling of Saint Matthew, you can find it. It's, I think it's in Rome, and it's it's wonderful. It's really really nice. And and my last question is. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm admiring your uh, the, the artwork and the uh, the and the things in the background there. Oh uh, yeah. If if you could have, <laughs> we were talking about it the other day, weren't we? If you could have, if you could have one piece of artwork from the world that you could hang in your hang in your house, because obviously that makes it slightly different. What mm. would it be? Uh, that's a good one. I mean, I I really, I don't think I can. I really, really like the artist Cy Twombly, the American painter, abstract painter. So I would really love one of his paintings um, to live with for sure. Those are really wonderful. I mean, as much as I like the, the calling of St. Matthew, I think um, taking it out of its position in, in Rome is not something I would want to do to the Italians, so. <laughs> <laughs> They well, they they have a. I mean, I've been to Italy a few times. That they have a just an unbelievable wealth of of art, architecture, almost too much uh, there to to know how to to to, to look after it. Um, yes, yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, going to Italy is 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 always fantastic. Um, right up until now, I mean, they've just something in the in the air, I think, over there that breeds such talent. It's extraordinary, for sure. Absolutely. And uh, Peter's just mentioned it's a Contolari Chapel. Would that ring a bell? Yep, I think that's the one. So thank you for fact-checking me. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's great. We get, we're getting sort of, yeah, it's, it's good to see a lot of the people that are watching uh, are, are sort of writing in with, uh, with, with, you know, all of a sudden it sparked, sparked interest, you know, uh, 
Henry, I'll, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to thank you so much for your your, your time. Uh, thank you so much. You know, it's it's at the moment. It's it's some somewhere sort of mid afternoon in New York City. Uh, really appreciate uh, giving of your time, giving of your knowledge, uh, sparking an interest. You know, you've really have sparked an interest with with, with me and and with, with lots of people uh, watching in terms of the in, in terms of art and. Uh, and what's possible, but also opening up our minds to to the fact that there isn't one traditional or any one route into the art world. And, and actually, regardless of what what your talents are, or or, or what or um, what you actually uh, uh, what your traits are, and and, and what you can do, um, there there is a place for you uh, in, in the art world, and whether it be the outgoing, uh, um, uh, friendly um uh, extrovert uh who, who versus the, the 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 quiet thinking reading type that can has a good eye for detail so you know clearly that there, there's roles there so look thank you so much for your for, for your time i hope please come and visit kings when we, we talked about it. please come and visit kings when you when you when you're in uh back in england again uh it'd be great um and uh yeah it, it's like I said, we, we really appreciate really appreciate your talk today. Yeah, thank you much for having me. And like I said, if anyone out there watching and listening uh, has any questions uh, or you know is considering a career in the art market and the art world, you know, uh, send me a message. Um, Abs absolutely, and chat any way I can. You know, um, so. yeah, absolutely, and and yeah. Julie's making that point now in, in, in the questions at the moment to us. You know, we would absolutely, by all means, we can share. This talk will be shared uh, on our YouTube channel. Please, by all means, you, you, you can watch it later again and, and, and share it. And if you, and, I'm, and I'm sure Henry put up his uh, email address and, uh, and his Instagram accounts. And by all means, if, if you want to quickly put it up one more time, Henry, yeah, by all means, please yeah. don't, do not hesitate to contact if, if you if you if you if you want to, any help or any advice or or just a uh, just a way in into the art world. Here Excellent. You go.